Have you ever paused to think about the tiny white crystals that sweeten your morning coffee, your desserts, and even your snacks? It's easy to overlook, but sugar has a fascinating journey that begins in the fields and ends in your kitchen. It's a transformation that blends agriculture, science, and a bit of magic. Sugar isn't just an ingredient, it's a story of nature and human innovation. Ready to learn about the amazing process behind sugar? Let's dive in and explore how sugar is made. Sugar is one of the most common ingredients in our lives. From our morning coffee to our favourite baked treats, it's the go-to sweetener that adds that perfect touch. But have you ever wondered how this sweet substance comes to life? Sugar isn't just magically created. It has an incredible journey, from the soil to the factory and finally to the kitchen counter. Whether it's from sugar cane or sugar beets, the journey of sugar involves agriculture, science and a series of well-coordinated steps that turn natural plants into the refined sugar we know. In this video, we'll take you behind the scenes to show you how sugar is made and how it evolves into the sweet crystals that bring so much flavour to our lives. Sugar starts with two very different plants, sugarcane and sugar beets. These are the primary sources for sugar production, but their origins and growing conditions differ. Sugarcane is a tropical grass found in places like Brazil, India and China. It thrives in warm climates, growing to heights of up to 10 feet. This tall grass is harvested once it's mature, usually by large machines, though in some regions it's still cut by hand. Sugarcane is incredibly fibrous, and the sweetness is locked in its stalks. Sugar beets, on the other hand, are root vegetables that grow in cooler climates, such as the United States, Russia and parts of Europe. These beets have a much different appearance, resembling large white radishes, and they are harvested from the ground in late autumn. While sugar beets make up a smaller share of global sugar production compared to cane, they play a crucial role in regions where the climate is less suitable for cane. Though they come from different plants, both sources contain sucrose, which is the key compound we use for making sugar. Let's look at the next step in the sugar making process. Once the sugar cane or sugar beets are harvested, it's time to extract the sweetness that lies within. The first thing that needs to happen is cleaning and preparing the raw material. For sugarcane, the stalks are chopped into smaller pieces and then the juice is extracted by crushing the cane under heavy rollers. This process is called milling. The juice that flows out contains a mix of water and sugar, along with some plant debris. To ensure the juice is as clean as possible, it's passed through a series of filters that remove the fibres, leaving behind a relatively clear liquid. With sugar beets, the process is a little different. The beets are sliced into thin strips, known as cassettes, and then soaked in hot water to extract the sugar. The water helps dissolve the sugar from the beets, producing a sweet liquid, which is the beginning of our journey toward refined sugar. Both processes, whether milling sugarcane or soaking sugar beets, create a sugary liquid that will undergo further refinement to become the sugar we're familiar with. But we're not there yet. Now that we have the juice or syrup, it's time for the magic of sugar refining to begin. While sugar extraction from plants is just the beginning, the refining process transforms this raw material into pure sugar. First, the extracted juice undergoes evaporation. This means the water is boiled off, leaving behind a thicker, more concentrated syrup. This syrup still contains impurities that need to be removed, which is why the juice goes through a clarification process. In clarification, lime and sometimes phosphoric acid are added to the syrup. These agents bond with the impurities, causing them to clump together and settle at the bottom of the container. This process helps create a much clearer liquid, but we're still not quite at the final product. Next, the syrup is subjected to crystallization. This is where things get interesting. The syrup is boiled at high temperatures to encourage the formation of sugar crystals. Small seed crystals are added to the mixture, which act as nuclei for larger sugar crystals to form. 
Over time, the crystals grow in size as the syrup continues to boil and concentrate. At this stage, you've got raw sugar, a mixture of large sugar crystals and molasses, the thick syrup left over from the crystallization. The sugar crystals are separated from the molasses through a process called centrifugation, where the mixture is spun rapidly in a machine, much like how you might use a salad spinner to dry greens. The result is raw sugar, still a bit brown, but much closer to what we recognize as sugar. Now that we have raw sugar, it still needs some final touches before it's ready to be packaged and shipped. The raw sugar undergoes a final purification and refining process. The raw sugar is dissolved back into water and the solution is filtered again. This step ensures that any remaining impurities are removed. Once the solution is clear, the sugar is recrystallized. This is done by slowly evaporating the water to form pure sugar crystals. The final product is bright white sugar, ready to be packaged into bags or containers. The white sugar we use in our kitchens has gone through quite an ordeal to reach this point, but what we have now is the pure, crystalline sugar we all know and love. It's important to note that during this refining process, byproducts like molasses and syrup are also produced, which have their own uses in cooking, animal feed, and even biofuels. While sugar is primarily used for sweetening, it has a surprisingly broad range of uses. Did you know that sugar plays a key role in the fermentation process? In beverages like rum and beer, sugar is a key ingredient that helps yeast ferment and create alcohol. It's also vital in the preservation of fruits and vegetables, particularly in jams and jellies, where sugar helps prevent spoilage. Sugar also appears in medicine, where it's used to make syrups for cough medicines, and even in cosmetics, where it helps moisturize skin. And let's not forget about molasses, the thick, dark syrup that remains after sugar is extracted. Molasses is often used in baking, animal feed, and even as a biofuel in some parts of the world. Sugar is more than just a sweet treat. It's a versatile ingredient that pops up in places we might not expect. From the fields of sugar cane and sugar beets to the processing plants where it's refined into pure sugar. The journey of sugar is one filled with intricate steps and fascinating science. It's easy to take sugar for granted, but now that you know the process behind it, you can appreciate the hard work and innovation that goes into creating this everyday ingredient. The next time you add sugar to your morning coffee or whip up a batch of cookies, remember that this simple ingredient has traveled a long road to get to you. If you found the process behind sugar production as sweet as I did, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more educational videos about the stories behind the products we use every day. From the science of food to the wonders of the world, we're here to satisfy your curiosity. Thanks for watching and remember, stay curious.